Hello and welcome. Baker Street is a 10-issue series from 1989, written by Gary Reed and Guy Davis. It was illustrated by Guy Davis, with cover paintings and letters primarily done by Vince Locke. Baker Street was one of the few early titles from Caliber Press. This was a small alternative publisher where well-known creators, Brian Michael Bendis and David Mack, got their start. Perhaps its most successful title was James O'Barr's The Crow, also from 1989. The series is broken down into two storylines, Honor Among Punks and Children of the Night. The first story was co-written by the publisher of Caliber, Gary Reed, and the artist, Guy Davis. Davis would then go on to write and illustrate the remainder of the series on his own. What makes this a rather distinct title is the examination of the punk slash goth culture of London in the 80s. It's represented as strictly punk, but the aesthetic is definitely goth. Regardless, the setting is an alternate version of London where World War II never occurred and Victorian sensibilities and styles have started to emerge in mainstream culture. So there is an extreme clash of cultures and a Baroque setting that never endured the Blitz. That is a fair amount of texture. The initial inspiration Guy Davis had for the series was to adapt Sherlock Holmes stories with two punk female leads. Gary Reed thought the concept might annoy Holmes purists so he and Davis reworked it. The end result was the alternate universe London where a visiting American medical student, Susan Pendergast, begins an internship with the punk detective Sharon Ford, also known as Harlequin. The mysteries that unravel are not based on prior Holmes stories, and Sharon, the Sherlock stand-in, has her similarities to the classic character, but for the most part, they are slight. The similarities being the high intelligence and the past drug addiction. Otherwise, her overall character and backstory are quite dissimilar. In fact, the Holmes connections overall are somewhat slight. Baker Street and the apartment at 221B, which is rented out by a person named Hudson, being the most obvious comparisons. There's also the antagonizing police inspector, Strand. Of course, Susan being a medical student is a reference to Dr. Watson. In other words, basic Holmes canon is used as texture. One doesn't need to be a Holmes scholar to appreciate Baker Street. Truthfully, the mysteries themselves are not overly engaging, which isn't to suggest they are terrible or poorly written, but it's not the strength of the series. What makes the comic work are the characters and the various factions that interact with one another. The unwritten code of conduct, the honor among punks, is interesting as it adds a medieval ambiance to the text. Regardless of whether it's a good examination of the actual punk lifestyle or not, it captures what feels like a real lifestyle. Sharon's backstory is quite engaging. She began as a brilliant police detective who exposed corruption in the police department. This led to a downward spiral where she quit her job, got addicted to drugs, and simply dropped out of society. She appeared years later seemingly fully formed and part of the punk subculture. She began solving crimes and settling disputes between warring factions. In essence, she became a buffer between mainstream culture and this new culture she adopted. Her motives appear pure. She pursues justice for a faction of society that openly distrusts the police and who is unwilling to work with the filth to solve crimes within their community. In a way, Sharon ensures chaos and murder don't overwhelm the people she closely identifies with. Susan is the entry point character. She's the stand in for the reader, who is put into this new unknown society, its culture, and its characters. Through her eyes, the reader is introduced to the history and the setting. It's done fairly flawlessly, and by the end of the first story arc, one has a very good sense of this world and its rules. Guy Davis's artwork really takes form during this series. It begins somewhat cartoony and clean, like his prior fantasy series, The Realm. But by the end of the first arc, his illustrations settle into a dirty, more visceral style. It becomes highly evocative of the grim characters and the urban anarchy of the setting. It becomes the style he's more popularly known for using. And it's perfect for the material. Baker Street was published sporadically over three years. And, despite an announcement in the final issue that Davis intended to take a break and then return to Baker Street, he never did. In 1992, Davis took a job illustrating Sandman Mystery Theater for the newly launched Vertigo Comics. This is a series he would draw for the bulk of its 70-issue run. 
Following this, he did a variety of work on Hellboy side projects, as well as his own series, The Marquee. Regardless, with Baker Street, what Davis left behind was an interesting time capsule of material. It hasn't endured like The Crow, but like that example, there is a timeless, recognizable quality to it that feels true, even if that truth is dark and unpleasant to face. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.